Hey, let's talk about games. What's up, my friend? You're listening to Hydra. Today we're talking about Inquisitor Martyr again, and we're doing a feedback video. This time I'm going to be talking about the cover system, and I'm going to be talking about the dual weapon system. Now, the purpose of this video is really just to get you guys talking more. These are just going to be a collection of my own personal thoughts, and my aim of these videos is always to get you guys talking about it, get you guys involved in the forums more, because feedback for the developers does change, and I've seen it change some of the directions of the components of this game over the past year. I do honestly think players have had a notable impact and I do even think with one month left to go to launch, it is possible for tweaks and sort of changes to still occur. Maybe in terms of sort of numbers, etc., and small minor buffs here and there, but I do think it could have some potential and that's not a real word, a potentially influential effect. Now guys, First up, let's get talking about the, the dreaded cover system, the system that many people would say should be deleted and some would say they quite like it. Really, there is um, quite a divided community on this. Some people that want the game to be faster feel it slows it down too much and others that like it to be slow feel that it does exactly what it should. I feel it suits 40k, however, it is somewhat janky in terms of its impact on a player. Now, here's my, my main issue with the cover system, and granted, I think it's currently f it's working as well as the developers want it to, in a sense. It provides you with what is essentially a bonus in health. It will absorb some damage before it dies, and, and that's pretty much the extent of its use, although it does also regenerate some suppression, which uh, basically, if you've not got the game, makes you more immune, well, it makes you immune, sorry, um, to... The CC effect slow stuns, shocks or freezes if you're fairly high in the suppression meter. So it has some very clear use. However, cover does die fairly fast. And again, I personally like that because it keeps you moving around rather than sitting behind one cover and being truly static. Obviously, there's a very gray area as to how fast it should die. That's maybe a topic for another video. But I don't think in its current situation, it's quite enough to get players using it. If we look at the recent PR footage, the PlayStation 4 footage, if we look at any footage, even of the developers playing, they only ever use the cover system when they're talking about it. When they're not talking about the cover system, they're running around. And even on the latest footage with the PS4, which has been sped up slightly for final release, granted it looks very nice, it looks much more fluid. But there's even less incentive to use the cover system there as I see it. So, I think a couple of things need to sort of be looked at here. The first up is, I think the cover system needs to be quote-unquote cool to use. That's right, within Gears of War, one instinctively knows that the cover system is very good and important because the quality of the animations are absolutely gorgeous. Now, this isn't going to look like Gears of War, it's a top-down ARPG, but I'm just pointing out that how something looks, I do honestly think has a very strong impact on us as players and how much we want to use a feature. If something looks cool, we will probably want to do it. If you could do a random cartwheel while walking around in an RPG, you will probably do that just because it looks good every now and again. It's just how we work. It looks visually impressive, so we're attracted to it. Currently, Martyr's system is not particularly attractive. It's somewhat awkward, especially when you're looking around pillars. Ugh. It's getting better slowly. The animations have had some revisions excuse me, um, but it still has a little way to go. So that's one avenue that could be pursued in order to sort of try and improve the situation. The other is to make benefits very clear to players because you can spec into it. You can get yourself, um, obviously, the suppression regen, passive. You can get, though, 20% flat damage reduction. Now, which is pretty nice. You can also get 30% cooldown reduction to skills with over a second cooldown in the range tree. Also very, very nice. So you potentially have quite a bonus to ranged firefights from this. Very nice to have. However, these are things you have to spec towards. And this seems to be aiming at being a core feature within the game. A core feature within the game that you have to build into to become more useful. I'm not sure that's the best path for this. I would like to see those buffs brought literally halved. I would like to see those buffs in the skill trees halved. And I'd like to see half of that buff go straight to the player right now. I would like to see, and it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, you, in theory, if you're behind cover, 
you can reload quicker because you know you've got a bit of time you've got a bit of space to breathe you're less likely to drop things um you could probably also improve your accuracy a little bit i could see um i could see ample justification for maybe a five percent range damage bonus to account for your increased accuracy heck you're leaning on cover extra points of stability there's lots of ways you could justify a minor buff to the character and make it very apparent apparent to the player now i know i know i know i know i can hear the melee players right now going but I know it wouldn't necessarily benefit you, but I do have an idea. And I got this idea from the Dark Heresy rulebook. Because, if, and if you're not familiar, this is the pen and paper RPG um, for the Inquisitor universe as, as such. And within that, there is a very nice rule, a very nice rule, that if you are in cover and you move a certain distance out of cover, you still get the benefit from the cover. Basically, what this sounds like to me in terms of gameplay is if, if you have taken cover, then you get a time in which you gain that bonus. And it makes sense. It would even encourage players to run around, jump in cover for two seconds to get this buff, move around for 10 seconds with the buff, go back into cover again, get the buff back. It could be a very nice way to make things a little bit, okay, yes, maybe it might look a little bit janky on screen. This isn't something I thought through entirely, but I do think it's a way of introducing this to the melees and giving them an incentive to occasionally take some cover, make use of an in-game feature, gain a buff, whatever that buff may be, 5% damage, 10% damage reduction, whatever, stuff they could spec into, I don't know, but I do think it could be an option. Now, moving on, let's move over to the dual weapon system. The fact that you can have two weapons equipped within this game. Again, going back to these streams, going back to the PR footage, going back to the interviews, all of the footage I've seen of the game, and I've watched every single video I can find, not every Twitch stream, I'm sorry guys, but pretty much every bit of footage I can find on this game, and not even the developers really use the weapon swap feature. It is just not commonly used within the game. It's just there's something about it that's not quite hammering at home for players. And I think here's for me what the couple of option a couple of obstacles are. The first of which is when you swap weapon, you are you are punished a small amount by having your weapon go into cooldown. And I believe that this is well, this is intentional. We've spoken to the developers about it before, and it is intentional because they don't want you to be playing this like Gears of War where you go fire, fire, swap, fire, fire, swap. Fire swap, fire swap, 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 fire, fire. It just, it's not really a button masher, this game. It, in something like Diablo, this probably could have worked. You could have had a dual weapon system and have combos, etc., come out, and it would have been a really beautiful thing. It worked really, really well within Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2 in particular, sorry. Uh, however, within Martyr, it's a very, it's a much slower. It's a, okay, I've seen this enemy, I'm going to need this weapon, let's get it out. Ah, I've seen this enemy now, so I'll get this weapon out, etc, etc. Now, one of the problems is, though, that weapons don't always seem that um, specialised. And I, I personally believe they probably shouldn't be, because you want players to be able to use what weapons they want. You don't want a player to be able to be saying to themselves, Oh man, I can't do um, the majority of the mission with the weapon I like. Maybe you give them a LAS rifle. If you make the LAS rifle completely useless against Chaos Space Marines, granted that's completely canon, it should be terrible against them, but then the, the guy with that weapon's going to have to sort of actually have to not only carry a second weapon that can compensate for that, but also swap to it every time they see a Chaos Space Marine, and you have to, you have to factor in how frustrated that is going to make some people. A lot of people, I think, especially on the, the, the more casual side, and let's face it, this game is pitched to a more casual audience. Um, it's it's a fairly welcoming game, I think, um, although it's also fairly punishing in terms of difficulty. So maybe it's not. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting um, issue we're faced with at the moment. But I do think there is a second layer of sort of potential issue going on in the background here, and that is that the skill system also really focuses you once you've got twenty or thirty points in particular. Really focuses you towards optimizing a weapon now you don't have to but for a long long time this is how i built and this is why i never changed weapon because i had something like an exodus rifle or a bolt gun and honestly if you have one of those two you don't need to change weapon they've both got ample aoe they've got anti-armor they've got anti-infantry 
excuse me, your job is done. You don't need to worry at all. So why swap? And the reality is you don't need to. You probably shouldn't swap if you've got those two weapons. So going, moving on from that point that you don't need to swap, um, the skill point then further enforces that by saying, well, your bolter rifle is quote-unquote optimised. So if you swap to another weapon that you've not accounted for already within your skills, you are no longer optimised and any potential benefit you will gain from that sort of additional weapon suitability to killing that opponent will probably not be that relevant because it's going to be negated by the fact you're not specced into it so much. So, ugh, bit of a mouthful there, but you guys know what I mean. If you spec so much into your needle rifle and the dot size, of things and um, applying slows to the enemy and doing extra damage to them when they're slowed and all of that stuff it's going to be a little bit off-putting to pull out a let's say a, a plasma rifle because you've spotted an armored enemy it's just sort of a little bit less attractive now I also have to admit and I've done videos on this and even live stream build workshops stream workshops as I call them I think pretty good name um, on building for two weapons simultaneously and it's it is doable it is doable but it is not necessarily easy to a beginner and that is my issue with it because I can build into a needle rifle and a power axe obviously you can't use them both on the same character so that's a bit of a bad example but there are many weapons that you can build into some even sometimes even a heat weapon and a physical weapon very easily there are enough trees that apply to both melee and ranged or even different types of range that you can do these builds but the problem is is that it requires quite a bit of in-game knowledge um, or at least a, a very studious mind in terms of the skill system and that's going to suit people that are that way inclined if you are not someone that wants to look through every skill in the game well maybe a hydra guide will be there to compensate for this by saying yo what's up bud you can probably use two weapons that you fancy and use this build and it won't be a problem but the thing is is not a lot of players i think especially players new to arpgs of which we have a high portion considering this is a 40k sort of magnet rather than a arpg sort of magnet there there is a potential issue that many of these players aren't going to want to study all of these skills in order to find the way to they so that they can then use the things that they want to use i'm just saying in a nutshell it's not particularly user friendly or beginner friendly to come up with builds that apply evenly to both weapons although granted for for up to level 10 or 20 it's it's probably not too bad but i think it's um it's probably something that will be overlooked by some i'm not sure the best solution to this the skill system sort of is what it is um, but I, I maybe I'd quite like to see some skills within the skill trees. One of my issues in particular is that I feel like the range tree and the, the melee tree could actually both be combined into the weapon tree. They're actually very similar when you look at them. There's some slight differences, but I really think actually, why don't you just combine this into one? And that way, you actually end up with something that um, suddenly you get a lot more build options and you get a lot more a lot less of this quote-unquote funneling which seems to sort of occur with these two I really feel like they could be merged just given how similar they are you know uh, anyway let's move on from that guys I think that's me about empty on sort of ideas as to what's going wrong with these two things I'm not entirely sure the solution for the weapon swap feature whether it be a, a minor buff to accuracy when you swap I couldn't really justify that in terms of physics or cannon um, but I do think it's something that's not necessarily attractive to players at the moment so it is something I'd like the developers to be thinking about um, and I'd like your thoughts on this too Guys and girls, you have yourself a fantastic week. I'll be seeing you soon. And live stream may be coming today. Not decided what game on yet. Maybe Total War Warhammer 2. Who knows? Take care, guys.